Brent, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure, James. Let's talk a bit about the hostile takeover bid that has been initiated by Aurora. Your position is obviously that the bid is opportunistic and they're using an inflated share price to acquire your company. What do you have to say to your own shareholders as to reasons why they should not tender their bid to the Aurora offer? Well, right now what we have is we're in the process of acquiring a new strike. That gives us, as a, we promised to our shareholders at the end of December, we are going to look at the rec market and find a way that we're going to be there f with that. A new strike seems to be the logical choice because of three things. They have the tragically hip and the up brand in behind them, which makes an iconic brand that's going to be breaking into a new market of this $8 billion market, which will pro likely have double digit entrances. Mm -hmm. We will have, a, they have a management team that can execute and they have uh, facilities in Ontario that are actually more than what we have in terms of production. Mm -hmm. So we see that we can then combine, we'd have 45,000 kilogram production, putting us in the top tier with our other peers in the industry, giving us instant access to the REC strategy, and at the same time, still pursuing the international treatments that we have, the international markets we're going, the $70 billion market there. Now in the case of what we have with our with our, the new strike is the best for the shareholders. We're going to see that it's actually giving us the best lift in our share price. We're mm -hmm. just getting started to really see this thing rock and roll. Mm. Okay, so then in terms of the future growth path of Canamed with new strike, you're proposing that it's at least as solid or better than what Aurora is capable of accomplishing. Absolutely. When we look at even the, even the Aurora executives themselves believe that we're woefully undervalued, that's why they want to buy us and then mm -hmm. fill their, what I call their house of cards and their recent run-up of, of stock price mm -hmm. and trying to use their inflated monopoly money as a way of trying to buy out our shareholders or convince them that they should tender their shares to them. But the reality is they even know that we should be worth two to three times what we are today, which would put us in that 40 to $50 stock range. So our shareholders, I think, are wise enough to know we should be getting that value lift in the shares. And the other point is that the, the Aurora stock has already seems to be fully valuated. That's why I believe the executives cashed out at November 28th and took $17.8 million off the table. Mm -hmm. When coincidentally, I doubled mine investment three days before that into our company. Now the other thing is that it doesn't smell right. There's lots of anomalies, which is what our initiative was yesterday to invite the Securities Commissions to take a deeper dive because there are a few irregularities that we see that are not quite copacetic in this in the way that they, in the manner in which they did this, okay. which is also contrary or, or unfair to our shareholders, the remaining shareholders that were not part of the lockups. Sure, can you elaborate on that a bit? Well, so right now, you know, they came in just an hour before we were to opine, because we started working with a new strike at the end of July, we were locked up, we had exclusivity with them to do due diligence, mm -hmm. look at their management team, look at their systems, look at all the different things they had to do, make sure that it made sense to our shareholders going forward, make sure it would be accretive, make sure that with, through our financial advisors, they would test it from the financial wherewithal to make sure it was going to really add some serious value and still effectively get us into the rec market with a top brand mm -hmm. and still allow us to do what we need to do on our top brand on the medical side. And it's, it's matching, the advisors say to do that. But an hour before we were to make that definitive agreement at the board level, we get the you know, informal circular with the, some terms with the two lockups from our, uh, some of the marriage shareholders, mm. which was a complete surprise. Well. And so that for us is uh, what I would call I don't know, financial guerrilla tactics. Sure, sure. And from, uh, from a broad market perspective, certainly Canamed has been in the game before anybody by a long shot. And so what is it about that sort of experience in the business as the first Canadian government sanctioned grower of medical marijuana that gives you an advantage over the entire range of experience of other growers? It gives us a, a lot of advantages in terms of dealing with regulatory agencies, especially as we span out across the planet. We helped the federal government work its way through there. We were partners for the first 14 years exclusively with them. And we had 26 contract amendments in our first contract with them, when, with the federal government, and, under, and then we had two other contracts with them. Mm -hmm. Now, as we enter into these other arenas in other countries, we're finding the very same learning curves that, that the government agencies need to go through. And so we're, we have a depth of management that can help their governments and their bureaucracies move through the system to getting the medical things moving forward, medical cannabis in their systems, which are all, by the way, they want to have our oils and our capsules in pharmacy. That's what they want the model going forward internationally. In the, in the government side here, though, they do listen to what we have because we have an imp impeccable track record. We have not had a single recall in 17 years of right. production. We have not been out of product ever in mm -hmm. 17 years. 
Whereas, you know, Aurora, in, in a two-year entrance, they've, been, they've had two recalls and several times they're out of product. I mean, it just speaks, we have depth because we have inventory control systems. We have 281 points of quality control in our system. We've done all the things that we had to do in order to make a good quality medicinal product. Now, those same features, manufacturing and brand, are necessary for the rec market. You need to have the brand very consistent because that's to manage the expectation of the consumer so that every single time they get the same thing that's produced the same way and the same quality. And it's also produced in a safe manner so they have safe product. Mm -hmm. So that's those same, those same behaviors are going to be needed and, and metrics are going to be needed for the rec pr products as well, which is why we also say that the new strike is good because they have the same sort of DNA thinking on this. Mm -hmm. They have the same sort of things. So that's okay, what we're Okay, so was that the key to your strategy in partnering with New Strike is an anticipation of the imminent recreational rules that were going to come out in July of 2018? Yeah, so we look, when we look at it, we were, we've been busy. I mean, we're growing our top line at 5% growth month over month. And so we've been, and with all these deals internationally, we say, look, we have to find somebody who can literally focus on the rec market. Our focus has been training physicians and pharmacists and doing, and starting on clinical trials and moving down the pharmaceutical path. That's a $70 billion market by 2025 internationally. Hmm. And we are leading in that, in that acquisition, in those, in those markets. We're leading, oh. right? On the, you know, the rec market is $8 billion market, not to be ignored. Our shareholders have spoken, they want us to be there, so we plan to be there. We think this is the best way to get there, to then capture both markets right. with top brands in both markets. Sure, okay, and so how long till we find out what the outcome of this little dust-up is? Uh, January 23rd is what we're bringing it to the shareholders on, uh, to have to vote on the new strike, and we're asking them to vote green, vote their proxy positive for new strike, because it'll be in all of our best interests. Okay, well, let's leave it there for now, Brent. We'll come back to you closer to that date and see how you're making out. Thanks for coming in today. My pleasure.